You are here for budgeting for nonprofit success using QuickBooks. That's why you're here today. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here. Here's how you can engage. Greg already said he wants you to type in the chat. I was going to tell you Q&A. He said the chat. You want to follow his directions. But mm -hmm. what I'd love for you to do is when this closes or if you have to leave earlier, there's going to be a survey that's going to pop up. It's just two quick questions. If you can answer those, you're going to get the slides and the video replay um, by this afternoon. I promise you. No, I won't promise you, but you will get them today or tomorrow. If you need the closed caption, just go ahead and type on the CC button. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Greg. He is the president of QuickBooks Made Easy, and he's going to introduce his team in just a moment. Thanks for being here, Greg. I have a great webinar. All right. Thank you, Aretha. All right. So hello to everybody. First of all, I want to see who's, who's seen me teach before. Put it in the webinar chat, either yes or no. Have you seen me teach before? Give me a yes or give me a no. Okay. So a lot of people have seen me teach before. Okay, cool. So then I'll just keep this short. Uh, we got some people that are no's. Um, so, uh, I am a CPA. All right. So the guy that does your 990, I do audits. I have an accounting firm here in Atlanta. And then I also own a company called QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits. This is a website. And all we do, um, in QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits is teach nonprofits how to use Quickity books. Okay. Um, we, uh, have webinars that we do. Uh, we also have on-demand training. Uh, that is streamable that you have forever and it goes into more detail than we could ever do in a live webinar. Um, and we also have on demand courses uh, that are there's a full bundle that's like 16 hours of learning that teaches you everything you could ever learn about QuickBooks. We also do tech support. We do nonprofit consulting. We do all kinds of stuff. But you are here for a webinar. So um, I'm going to go back to the slides here. Um, and it's not just me. Um, this is our team. There's myself. Uh, there's Paige Hudson Garcia, who is on the line right now. Say hello, Paige. Um, those of you that have tech support with us, um, Paige is one of the ones that answers those questions for you. Also, if you attempted to move to a TechSoup version of QuickBooks Online, either from desktop or from a regular version of QuickBooks Online, but if you bought uh, QuickBooks, if you bought QuickBooks from TechSoup and needed to migrate your old file over, Paige and her team is probably the one that did it. We also have two other tech support agents, Question Telka, Barbara Starley, and then Bill Sims is our marketing person. He knows absolutely nothing about QuickBooks, <laughs> but he knows something about everything else we do. So, all right. So that is our team. This is me. Uh, and uh, I think that's it. If you've never done a webinar in Zoom, Oh, thank you, Cindy. She said she liked the facial hair. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I'm going to get it trimmed up a little bit, but I think I'm going to keep it for a while. Somebody said it made me look distinguished. I didn't know whether that was a good thing or a bad thing. But anyway, um, so if you've never um, used, seen a webinar in Zoom before um, and you want to make it bigger, it's not easy to see on your screen. You roll your mouse around until you see this little view button right here, right there, and you push it. And then you push full screen and it bloop, makes it real big so you can see the whole screen. So that's kind of the dealio with that. I just like to point that out. And also, can everybody hear me? Uh, David, yes, this is archived. Yes, it is. But you're going to get the recording this afternoon, David. Um, all right. So that's what we do. Um, let's see what else we have here. Um, we do have a three-day webinar series coming up. This is a uh, two and a half hours a day for three days. It's coming up in November. We are going to give you $40 off to come to that, but let's go through this webinar first, and then I'll give you the coupons, uh, at the end. Uh, we also have coupons for our, our training that is on demand. Um, but we'll review that at the end. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about entering budgets by income and expense account only. And we, some people like to do that by month and some people like to do it by year. Um, and then we're going to talk about entering a budget for individual programs. Is there anybody that's interested in getting a budget for each one of your programs? Put it in the chat. I'm just kind of curious. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, and you can also get a budget by grant. We don't have time to cover that during this free webinar, uh, but we do have a series coming up about, tra about tracking restricted grants where we'll be able to go into it. Uh, we're also going to obviously look at reporting, the budget overview and the budget versus actual. So we're going to basically do a budget by month, by year, by program, and we're going to look at all of them. 
Okay, so that's kind of how we're going to do this. Uh, let's see what we have here. All right. Don't have time to do it by grant because we only have an hour for this thing. Now, there's one thing that I need to teach you right up front. And most of you probably already know this if you've seen me teaching before. Um, but this is it. When you enter an expense, I'm going to say this one more time. When you enter an expense, there are three, usually, three things that you need to track when you enter an expense if you are a nonprofit. The first thing is what I call the natural category of the expense. This is kind of the natural way of thinking about the expense, the what of the expense. Um, name me some natural categories of expenses that most nonprofits have. You can put it in the chat here. Um, utilities. Yes, that's good. Wages, supplies, office expense. Now, the one that said administration, that's wrong. Okay. Uh, administration is not a natural category. It's got to be the what of the expense, okay? Somebody said program supplies. Really, the natural category is supplies, okay? Travel, office supplies. You should never have the word program in an expense account, and you should never have the word administration in an expense account. Because what that is, that is the second thing you need to track. Not only do you need to tell QuickBooks, what the expense was, was it for salaries, was it for supplies, was it for travel, um, but also you need to say, is it travel that's administrative, is it travel that's program in nature, or is it travel that is fundraising, okay, so that's the second thing that you need to track, okay, maintenance is a traditional expense account, but in addition to saying whether or not it's program at uh, it's what it is, you got to say why it is program admin or fundraising. And let me just just to kind of hammer this home. If you look at a 990, does anybody ever look at their 990? If you look at a 990, I'm just filling out the P uh, looking at the PDF. The way that the expenses are on the 990. Oh, duty. Okay, well, I can't see it there. Let me go back over here because it wants me to images. Um, let's see if we can get to where the expenses are. Well, darn it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hold on a second here. I wonder if I can look at a 990. 990s are public information. So I think what I'm going to do is just pull one up for you. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, here we go. Okay. Anybody can see a 990. You can go to GuideStar. Okay, here is, here is a 990. And if you notice, let me see if I can make this a little bigger here. The expenses on the 990, which is the tax return, have to be shown in rows and columns, okay? The rows are the natural category, like travel or payroll taxes or wages and the columns are is it program is it management or is it fundraising okay that's kind of the why of the expense all right and so uh no the chart of counts needs to be the what but don't worry uh kiyoki about all of these names here a lot of these accounts on the 990 you're not going to need okay so don't worry about that okay can you provide a class on the preparation of the 990s? Well, I don't know about that because most clients don't do their own 990. But anyway, so what I'm going to do, let me close out of here. And all right, I'm going to go over to QuickBooks. Uh, and I'm going to start by using QuickBooks Online. Uh, let's see where this is. It's QuickBooks Online. Did I close out of it? I did. All right. And actually, this is good because what I'll do is I'll throw out this poll here uh, to see what program you guys are using, because some of you guys are probably using QuickBooks Desktop, but I imagine most of you guys 
are using QuickBooks online. Let's see. Uh, and which product do you use? Let's see what this is. Yeah. All right. So go ahead and answer this question. Um, just the first question. This was this poll was not put in correctly, but just answer the first question. Which product do you use? QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Online? Now I'm going to show you how to do budgeting in both of them, but I just wanted to start with QuickBooks Online because I know most people have QuickBooks Online at this point. Yeah. So right now we have 218 people listening to me. Um, please put your questions in the chat. Um, Karen, the third thing. So the third thing, oh, I know what you were saying. You, I was saying there are three things you need to track when you're entering an expense. One is the natural category. One is whether it's program, admin, or fundraising. And we're going to use the class feature for that. And then the third thing is what grant paid for it, Karen. That's the third thing, what grant paid for it. Okay. All right, so uh, we'll give it another second here, and then I'm going to show you the poll just to see how many people. Um, yeah, you don't have to answer the rest of the questions if you don't want to, but I guess go ahead and answer them, and then I'll be able to see them. Go ahead and answer them. But, okay, I'm not even – I think what I'll do is just keep the poll going. But about 80% of you are using QuickBooks Online, all right? 15% of you are using desktop. Um 7% are using both, and there's actually a few people that don't use either, and they just like listening to me, <laughs> which is hilarious. But anyway, so the point is, I'm going to go back into QuickBooks Online here, is that if you are going to track programs, which all nonprofits, unless you're a church, should track a program, you're going to use the class list to track that. So, and this becomes important when you're talking about entering a budget by program. So I'll bring this up again when I start teaching, um, when I get to entering a budget pro for a program. But I'm going to go ahead and just enter a check window here. And when you enter a check, you see this thing here that says category? It really means expense account. And this is where you would put what it's for, perhaps supplies, all right? So do we have a supplies here? Let me see. Yeah, we have other supplies, okay? And then over here in the class field is where we put whether it's program, admin, or fundraising, and if it's program, which program it is, all right? And then the third thing we need to track is what grant it's for, okay? And this is where we would put the grant, okay? So uh, please center your browser, is it not centered, Judy? If you use customers to track your grants, how do you track your donors? Same list. Use the same list. Okay. Simple Start does not have a budget module. You have to get either QuickBooks Plus or QuickBooks Advanced. You can get them from TechSoup. Um, is there anybody else that can't see my full screen besides Judy? Yeah, Judy, it's just you. It's just you. All right. So now let's get in to entering a budget. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a budget for just the organization as a whole, where we're basically budgeting by income account and expense account only. We're not budgeting by program. We're not budgeting by grant. Okay. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Now, anytime you want to set up something in QuickBooks, you go to the little mini gear right here, this little tiny gear. And so that's where you go to set up or enter a budget. So I'm going to go ahead and click it. And I'm going to go to budgeting right here. And here is a bunch of budgets that we already have. All right. To enter a new budget, I'm going to click create budget. All right. So you can do a budget for a balance sheet, but... Why? So I would do a budget for a p and And those of you with desktop, I'm going to show you how to do this in a minute in desktop. Um, and I will answer some questions um, about there's admin questions people have. I'm going to um, answer those questions in a little bit. Let's just keep going with the budgeting. So the period, this is the year. Now, by the way, my fiscal year for this data file is on June 30. 
Um, and it looks like about 30 of you have a June 30 fiscal year, but over half of you have a December 31. So you set that up when you set up your data file. Um, now, there are three ways to do a budget. You can do a consolidated budget. That means you're budgeting by income and expense account only without regard to what class it's for. So in other words, let me go ahead and duplicate this. And let me just show you what I mean. Let me go ahead and go back to the check. So if you're budgeting for the organization as a whole, not by program, that means you're budgeting by account, which means you're put it, putting a budget in for salaries, you're putting a budget for payroll taxes without regard to how much of it is program, admin, or fundraising. Okay, that's consolidated. In a minute, we'll do the budget that's subdivided. And then if you do a budget subdivided, you can do it by class. That's if you're budgeting by program, or you can do it by customers. But we're going to do the consolidated budget first. Okay. Now, one thing that you can do here, you see this pre-filled data. You can actually have the budget pre-filled with the actual numbers, either for the current year or one of your previous years. And then you can alter them. All right. So um, I'm actually not going to do that yet because you would really only want to do that if you're budgeting by month. If you budget by year, you wouldn't do that because this is going to put in numbers for each and every month. So the first thing, um, a consolidated report, it's really a stupid name. It, it should have just said account only. All it means is you're budgeting by account. You're not budgeting by um, program or uh, you're not budgeting by grant. Um, so, uh, and again, I will, uh, explain what I mean by admin and program in a minute. Okay. Right now we're just doing a budget for the organization as a whole. Okay. Now there is a way to create a budget in a spreadsheet and then import it. It, it doesn't work very well. I don't like it. Okay. So I'm not going to teach it. Okay. So don't even, don't even go there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. I mean, you might as well have just done it directly in this spreadsheet rather than doing it in an Excel spreadsheet, okay? All right, so I have a question for you, and maybe you already answered it in the poll. Let's see. Um, let's see. Ah, okay. So uh, how do you budget? Do you budget by month? by quarter or by year. Now this, the poll is done. So uh, actually I think, did you separate it out? Aretha? So I did, I there? did, okay. I did separate it. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see, how do you budget time-wise? Okay, go ahead and answer this poll. How do you budget? Do you budget by month? Do you budget by quarter? Do you budget by year? Or what's a budget, okay? So while that's working, I'm gonna show you what I mean by budgeting by month versus budgeting by year, okay? If you budget by year, what that means is whenever you look at a report, budget to actual, like at this report, there's only three months have gone by, July of 24 through September of 24. Only three months have gone by. The budget column is going to be the entire year's budget. So the actual column is going to be three months, but the budget column is going to be the entire year. That's what your budget looks like if you budget by month, okay? I'm sorry, budget by year. If you budget by month, let me go ahead and duplicate this. It looks like most of you actually budget by year. If you budget by month, Then when you look at the report, not only will the actual column be the three months that you're looking at, July through September, but the budget column will be three months as well. So what that means is you're putting in a budget number in for every month here, whereas here you're just putting a total for the entire year. Okay? So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, it looks like you've already shared the results. So it looks like... 63% of you budget by year, 33% of you budget by month. There's a few people that budget by quarter, okay? 
Kim, we'll get to that in a minute. All right. And so look at what happens if you budget by year. I want you to see something. So three months have gone by, July, August, and September. The actual number of contributions or the amount of contributions is 4,900 out of 55,000. We've gotten in 9% of our budget. Three months has gone by. Is that good? Or is that bad? What's your knee-jerk reaction when you see that 9%? Three months has gone by. We've only gotten in 9% of our individual contributions. Your knee-jerk reaction, it's bad, okay? Now, a quarter of the year has gone by. What do you think we should be getting um, as the percentage? Yeah, Amy said it. It should be 25. What is the assumption about how we get our donations that we're making when we say that number should be 25%. What is the assumption about how we get our donations in? That we get them evenly through the year. Do we get them evenly through the year? No, absolutely not. And so that's why budgeting by year can be a little challenging because you can't really tell whether you did good or not. So what I like to do is if you're going to budget by year, I like to send the report over to Excel, and you can do that in QuickBooks Online, export, over to Excel. Here it is in Excel. Let me open it up. And I'll show you how to enter the budget in a minute, but I just figured I'd do this since I was here. By the way, in QuickBooks Online, when you send stuff over to Excel, it always comes over as zeros, and I get people calling me on tech support, and they think it's broken. You have to click Enable Editing, and then the numbers fill in, okay? But so I like to put here that this is the annual budget, and then I like to put 25% right here because that's kind of what their brains are thinking i mean they're not stupid but it's just when you look at it the first thing your brain does is kind of like well all things being equal it should be 25 percent. so you're you basically know when your board is going to ask you questions if you're budgeting by year anything that's less or more than 25 percent. so then and i've done this before give me a break uh wait till uh december okay because okay, that's when all the money comes in. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and show you how to actually enter a budget. Um, first, we'll do it by year. Well, first, we'll do it by month, and then we'll do it by year. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and don't say that. All right. So if you budget by month, then you put in a budget number for every single month. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. So here we go. I'm kind of going back and repeating myself. Where do I go to enter a budget? Where do I go to enter a budget? You can put it in here. What where, what area? Yeah, you go to the gear. You go to the gear. And that's where your settings are. And then you go to budgeting. Okay. And I'm going to create a budget. And I'll pick, you know, I'll pick a different year just to, okay. I'll do a consolidated budget. I'll click next. Okay. And it shows you the actuals just to kind of refer to it. I don't really need that. So I'm going to hide it. Okay. And then I'm going to put the numbers. Now, if I'm budgeting by month, that means I'm going to put a number in for each month. Okay. Like that. All right. And if you want, if you're budgeting by month, you could conceivably, let me go ahead and show you what happens here. Create a budget, consolidated, pre-fill, 2025, year to date, at, well, I'll do 2024. I'll click next. And then the numbers will already be sitting there, okay? I don't have them in every month, but they'll already be sitting there. And then you can adjust them, okay? So, but they're actual numbers. Uh, you can also copy. Like if you had a budget for the 2023, 2024 year, if you click here and click duplicate, it'll take that budget and then it'll create a new budget for a new year and it'll copy the numbers over, okay? Um, 
it gets the numbers to pre-fill, Amy, um, in that previous example. When you said pre-fill data, it's the actual transactions, Amy, in the current year or whatever year you're in. All right. Does that answer your question, Amy? Amy? Amy. <laughs> Is that okay? Cool. Okay. Why do you only think so? What's your question, Amy? Bothers me that you only think so. It takes the actual transactions that have been entered. And that's what it puts in there. So if, if you literally paid a thousand dollars for office supplies in the month of June, it's going to say a thousand dollars is going to be your budget for the month of June for office supplies. Okay. If you copy a previous year's budget, can you edit the numbers for the current year? Yes. You can edit the numbers for the current year just like you can uh for the actual. So they're all any either you pre-fill or you copy a budget from another year, you can still change the budget. You can always change the budget. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to create budget. Going to click next, and then you'd put in the numbers like that. Okay. Now, if you have accounts where uh, the number is pretty much uh, the same all year long, okay. So maybe office supplies. Well, let's do rent. Where's rent here? Rent. So let's say it's 2400 So I can click 2400 here. And then if I click this little uh, forwards arrow in this blue circle, it copies it. So you don't have to type it a bunch of times. Okay. The other thing that you can do, if you have things where you know what you want to spend all year, stuff like office supplies, but you don't actually, you know, you're not really going to know what month you're going to spend it in. So you just want to kind of split it evenly. Um what you want to do is you see this budget total here. You can put the total for the year. And you see this little, it looks like it's a split. And it splits it. And it even rounds to make sure that you still have the total number over here. Y'all see that? Does that make sense to y'all? So these are just ways to uh, be able to create, uh, to enter the numbers without having to enter them. You could either put it in the first month and copy across, or you could put the total for the year and let it split here. All right. Um, if you create a monthly budget, but only set up certain months, does it matter? No, not at all, Demita. Not at all. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see what we have here now. So that is entering by month. I'm trying to think if there's any other things I want to cover about this. I don't think so. Um, does anybody have any questions about entering by month? Anybody have any questions about entering by month? You just put it in here. When you're done, you click save. I'll go back to one that I already have. Uh, here's one by month. Here we go. So see, that's why when we did a budget to actual the budget number was this 47, 49, 99. And what that is, that is 47, 49, 99. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. That's this, this, and this added together. All right. Let's see if anybody else has any questions. Can you edit the budget during the year? Absolutely, Amy. You can edit, you can edit budget during the year. But I'm not sure why you would want to do that. I mean, I guess you're moving things around between months is okay. But typically, you want to don't necessarily want to do a big change to a budget uh, unless something huge changed, like a giant grant you didn't get or a new grant that you did get. And then what I would do is instead of changing the old budget, copy it and then edit, create a new budget. Because you can have more than one budget for the same year. Okay. Um, uh, let's see what else here is. Can you, can you edit a budget during, you already did that. Okay. You already did that. Okay, cool. Uh, just to note that if you have an expense that you know is happening in October, you can enter that amount in October in your budget. Yeah, that's right. You would enter these expenses in the months that they would typically occur. And by the way, if you have loan payments that you need to make, 
or fixed asset purchases that you need to make. These things are not typically supposed to be expensed. Fixed asset purchases are supposed to go on the balance sheet and loan payments go against the liability. But if you want to budget those, what I tell people to do is go ahead and create an account for fixed asset purchases that's an expense account and do the same thing for loan payments. Make the account numbers really high so that it puts them all the way down at the bottom of the P&L. Um, and then you'll have to back them out at the end of the year. But I am perfectly okay with you doing that, okay? All right, so that's budgeting by month. Now let's do this in QuickBooks Desktop. For those of you that are in QuickBooks Desktop, where are y'all? Go ahead and put something in the um, go ahead and put something in the chat because I know people have not uh, have been sitting here that are in QuickBooks Desktop. Where are y'all? Put something in the chat. I don't want you to think we forgot about you. Hello, Holly. All right, you're here. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Company Planning and Budgeting set up budgets okay and then you click create new budget you pick the year you want to do a budget for profit and loss we click next this no additional criteria that's the equivalent of a consolidated budget okay we click next we can create a budget from scratch we can also use the previous year's data notice how quickbooks online lets you use current year's data to create a budget by month and previous year's data. This one only lets you use the last year, okay? And so we'll create a budget from scratch and the screen looks basically the same, okay? Now, the difference with QuickBooks on a desktop is if you want to put the total and have it split, you, you can't really do that. You can't really do that. Okay, so you just kind of have to 3,500, okay, divided by 12 and click tab. And then you got to click it and then you got to copy it across. Okay. Now, the thing is, then you have four cents over. So then you have to go to the last one and you have to lower it by four cents so that the budget is still the total, all right? So that's a little bit of an annoyance, okay? Uh, yes, you'll receive a copy of this, Stephen. All right, so that's budgeting um, by month. Now, to get a report, I'm going to go ahead and build you this report so that you can see it. So the first thing we're going to do to look at a report, I'm going to go to the gear and I'm going to go to budgeting. Usually you go over to reports to get reports, but I'm going to go to the budgeting area if I'm wanting a report based on um, a budget. So here is where I budgeted by month and you'll see we can create either a report that's a budget overview. I'll go ahead and click that. This is something you could give a board of directors so that they could vote on it. And all right, so here it is. Now, in QuickBooks Online, they have two reporting formats. They have the normal classic view, and then they have this new view that everybody hates. And we're looking at this in the new view, which is really kind of weird because you can't see any of the numbers. You have to basically click this view options and click expand, and then you'll be able to see everything. But I just like to click this button here and click switch to classic view. And then here we go. All right. You got it? All right. So then let's say we want to look at a budget to actual report. Let me get back to where we were. Okay. There it is by month. So we're going to do a budget versus actual. Now, the way that this thing works is when it pops up, first of all, it'll be in this duty thing. I can't stand their, this reporting here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to the classic view. Okay. So here's budget, actual, over uh, the dollar amount over budget, or the percent. So it's dollar amount and percent. So that's four columns for July. 
four columns for August, four columns September. That's a lot of columns, okay? It's 36 plus the total, 40 columns. Now, um, obviously, you would not want to give this to a board of directors. A finance committee or staff might like it, but it's way too many columns for the board of directors. We kind of just want it totaled, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the date and make it be for whatever time period I want. So I was doing the first three months of our fiscal year, July, August, and September. I'll click run report. By the way, whenever you make a change to a report, don't refresh the screen. If it's if this run report is here, click that. It's much faster. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this customize button over here because we want to make a change because it's still giving me all three months separated. And you see this thing that says show grid? I'm going to move this. I'm going to make it be account versus total account versus total and then it's going to look like this and this is what i would give to the board all right now some people oh, well before i go any further i don't want to have to keep doing that every single month so what i'm going to do is i'm going to memorize this report okay so i'm probably going to memorize it to let's see uh see this fiscal year to last month because that's usually how you're doing this you're like you're in september so the report for the board is going to be july 1 through september uh um th through august 31 okay so you could memorize it this way uh and i'll go ahead and run this report okay and then i'm going to click save and I'll name it uh, budget versus actual or board. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. And now we no longer have to go in to the budget screen, find the report, that find the budget, click on this. And then customize it. Let me go ahead and switch to the classic view. And then customize it so that we can make it accounts versus total and change. I won't have to do any of that anymore. All we'll do is go to reports. Go to the custom area. And then here it is right here. And whenever I pop it up, it's always going to be this fiscal year to last month, which is exactly what I needed. Okay, cool. Great. Okay. Now, those of you that budget by month in desktop, let's go to desktop here. You're going to go to reports and budgets. Here's your budget overview. Here's your budget versus actual. Okay. You pick your year. You click finish. And then this show columns here, it's by month. We're going to make it total only. And then we'll go here this fiscal year to last month. And then you can memorize this one. So here you click memorize rather than uh, save customization. Or board. Okay. And so then reports, memorized reports, profit and loss, budget versus actual for board, and it'll pop up and it'll always be the right number. Okay. Yes, you can unmemorize reports. If you go to reports, memorized reports, go to the memorized report list. And I encourage you, particularly those of you in desktop, but it may be in QuickBooks Online too, you can click on any report and click delete. Okay. You got to get there by going to reports, memorize reports, go to the memorize report list. Okay. Now in QuickBooks desktop, there is a really cool report that you don't have in QuickBooks online. Somebody asked about it earlier. It's a profit and loss budget performance. What this does
is it's giving me for whatever time period I want. Let me actually let's make sure that I'm picking the right one here. Reports. Budget. Uh okay. Oh yeah, I think it's I think it's this one. All right. Got to look to the one that I had it. Okay, there we go. All right. So what it does here is it gives you the actuals and the budget for the month, whatever time period you're wanting. Okay. And then it has, uh, so that's just for the one month. Then it has the budget. I'm sorry, the actuals year to date. Then it has the year to date budget. And then it has the annual budget. So it not only gives you the budget for the time period you're looking for, but it gives you the budget for the entire year. They do not have that in QuickBooks Online. I know it's stupid, but they do not have that in QuickBooks Online. So what you end up having to do in QuickBooks Online is you basically, get here, you basically have to take this report. This is July through August. You have to send it over to Excel, export to Excel. Okay, so here it is in Excel. This is going to suck, okay? Then what you have to do, I'd want them to, Tamara, but at this point, they don't have that. Then what you want to do is take this report and make it for the whole year. Run the report. Now you've got the budget for the whole year here, as well as a bunch of other columns. Then export this. Open that one up. Here we go. Okay. And then I want you to show. I want to show you a problem here because I know you people in QuickBooks Online. A lot of you guys want this. All right, so here's our annual budget. So you could copy this. Copy. Go to the other report. And then paste it over here. Now, when you paste it, you want to paste it as a number, the value, like that. Okay? Now, this works fine unless something happens where you've got a transaction uh, that occurred, um, it wasn't in the original lines for the month to date, but the budget's in there for the whole year. Then things get screwed up. You see this accounting, uh, accounting there, 50. No, this still works right. This still works good. Let me see if there's anything where there's a problem here. Um, it doesn't look like it, but you can see where things might get out of whack in terms of lines. Do you know what I'm talking about? So Aaron, um, that's what I was going to teach them. So basically, in order to make sure these numbers line up, what I do, let's save. Before I send this over to Excel, I tell it here where it says show non-zero or active only. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say show all rows. Then even accounts where there was no transactions will appear. And what that ensures of is that if you do that for both of them, then they'll always line up. Does that make sense, guys? You click all all rows. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, cool. It's pretty cool. All right. So that's budgeting by month. So let's go into budgeting by year now. So if you budget by year, I'm going to go ahead and click budgeting. And it's okay if you budget by I'm confused. Why do you need to work in Excel? The reason why you need to work in Excel, Adrian, Adrian, is because there is no report that will give you a budget for a short a short period and a budget for the entire year. Does that make sense, Adrian? 
There's no report in QuickBooks that allows you to have a budget just for a short period and then a budget for the whole year compared to actual. Does that make sense to you, Adrian? Adrian? Okay. All right, cool. All right. So let's budget by um, uh, year now. So to budget by year, we'll do it in QuickBooks Online first. I'm going to click on the gear. I'm going to click on budgeting. Wait for it to open. The fun of using QuickBooks Online. You're subject to the perils of the internet. Maybe I didn't try that again. Oh, I'm already here. Jeez. Okay, I click Create Budget. You pick your time period that you want to create a budget for. And we'll do Consolidated. Now, if I want a budget by year, waiting for it to open. Still waiting for it to open. I think I'm going to have to refresh the screen. All right. And here we go. All right. Now, if you want a budget by year, all right, let me just tell you something. The first thing that you might notice is you see this thing that says monthly, quarterly, or yearly. You're like, oh, I budget by year. And then you click this and you're like, oh, this is going to be great. My budget for the year is $55,000. Well, it's not budgeting by year. When I click over to monthly, it's split it up by month. Okay. So it does not budget by year. This is just the way that it looks on the screen. If you're wanting to budget by month and you just want it to split evenly, you can put the number in by yearly, but when you go back to monthly, it's going to be split. Okay. So that is not the way to do that. Okay. So let me go ahead and clear out of there. Um, clear data. All right. Okay. So now you might think to yourself, well, let me just put it in the budget total line. But that also splits it, okay? So the only way to budget by year, the only way that when you look at a budget to actual report, it's always going to be the annual budget. The only way to do that, let me go ahead and clear out of this again. Okay? The only way to do that is to put the entire budget in just one of these 12 columns. And I'm going to ask you, which one do you think you would put your annual budget in if you want the annual budget to appear whenever you run a PL compared to budget? Not in budget total, Adrian, because I'm going to show you again. If you put it in budget total, I just showed you, Adrian. If you put it in budget total, it splits it by month. So when I were going to look at a report that's a budget to actual for July, August, and September, the budget column is just going to be three months. If I budget by year, I want the whole year to always be in the budget column. Okay. So I see some people suggesting. Let's see. Okay. All right. So if you want um, the budget by year, some people say you put it in the first month. Some people say you put it in the last month. Well, let me tell you something. When I run a budget to actual, let me get to where it was. Here's a budget to actual. And this is for July, August, and September. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull this 4,900 here. Let me make this a little bigger. Oh, it doesn't let me do it. There we go. Um, this 4,900 is based on the actual transactions that occurred during July, August, and September of 2024. Where do you think it got this budget number of 55,000? Where do you think it got that from? Where do you think it got that 55,000? What it does is it looks in the budget entry screen, and since you're asking for a July, August, and September, it's going to look in this column that column, and that column, okay? So if you had put your budget in the last month of the year, the budget column would be blank. 
until you got to that last month. So you always need to put it in the first month of the year. Okay. So you would put it here like this. Okay. Like that. All right. So let me go ahead and exit out of that. Okay. So when you're done, I think I have one by year here. Your entry screen is going to look like this. It'll all be in the very first month. Okay. All right. Yes, Adrian, it'll be January for you. And Ashley was like, why would we only budget by year? If we can do this method, then it shows monthly or annual. Nice to have the option when reviewing. Well, that's true. That's true. You could do two budgets, one by year and one by month. That's one thing that's neat about QuickBooks Online. You can have multiple budgets for the same fiscal year. In QuickBooks Desktop, you can't. Now, to do um, a budget by year in QuickBooks Desktop, planning and budgeting, set up budgets, create a new budget, and... And then you put it in the very first month right here. All right. So that is budgeting by a uh, year. All right. So um, I'm trying to think of what else we need to cover. We got about 10 minutes left. Um, ah, budgeting by program. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else left by budgeting. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, all right, so budgeting by program. So somebody wanted to know what I mean by program. So when you enter an expense for your organization, in addition to the natural category of what it is, supplies, travel, wages, also you want to tell it whether um, it's a programmatic expense which means you spin it directly on serving the people or doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing versus admin, which is like overhead. And that it's not the cost of your standard operating expenses. It's costs that are associated with administration, things that aren't related to the programs. Like for instance, the cost of um, uh, QuickBooks is an admin cost. All right. Uh, a portion of the executive director's time is an admin cost usually like just 10 or 15 percent okay and then fundraising that's the third group that basically is the cost you spend raising more money and that's usually a, a portion of the executive director's time so it'd be a portion of their wages and payroll taxes and then if there's a development director it'd be a portion of their time okay and typically uh and the reason why uh funders want to know this is because they want to know that most of your money is going to fund programmatic stuff like if I'm giving money to a nonprofit, I don't want to think that they're using most of the money to pay for the administration building. I want to know that they're helping the children or whatever it is. OK, so and we could have long discussions about how to determine what is a program expense versus what is admin versus fundraising. Can you repeat the last step for budgeting by year in QuickBooks Online? Well, I mean, here it is. You just put the entire budget in the first column, the first month of the year. All right, Irma? Um, all right. So uh, let's see. What about next month? What does that mean? Uh, I have set up a budget, but I can't seem to lock it in so the budget can't be changed later. Yeah, you can't do that. Budget, if somebody can get in, uh, with their username, they're going to be able to change the budget. Okay. Um, one of my organizations is a budget by class. Let me show you how to budget by class. Yes, you can do a budget by grant in desktop. Yes, you can. Um, can you show in budget to actual how that report shows? I'm not sure what that means. All right, let's do a budget by program. So in QuickBooks Online, you go to the gear. You go to budgeting, and then you click create budget, and we'll do it for a P&L, but instead of leaving it consolidated, you click subdivide by class. If it was grant, you'd pick customers, 
and then subdivide four. And I'm going to go ahead and select all because if you're going to budget by program, that would mean you'd budget by class because your classes are supposed to be for your programs. And I know some of you aren't using classes that way. You should be. You should have a class for each one of your programs in the class list in QuickBooks and then one for admin and one for fundraising. Okay. So I'm going to click select all. And then I'm going to click next. So then what you do, it's the same thing that you did for an organization wide budget. The only thing that's different is you have little mini budgets in here. So here we have the budget for the guidance center. So here's the guidance center. That's one of their programs. And I could either budget by month or by year. I'm gonna get a $10,000 individual contributions restricted there, $60,000, you know, and then you'd have your expenses too. Um, of your salaries, we think 25 goes to the guidance center. Um, this is based on the time spent. Um, and then we have 2,500 for payroll taxes and on and on like that. When you're done, you click save. And then you click over here and you pick your next one and then you do it for that one. And then you click save and then you click on this and you do it for your next one. And then you click save. It's the same way in desktop. You go to company, planning and budgeting, set up budgets, create new budget, pick your year. And you do by class. Unlike online edition in desktop, when you click it, you don't have to say which classes you want to enter a budget for. They just assume you want to enter it for everything. And then here's the fundraising class with its activity, its budget. Then here's the guidance center with its budget. Here is the synergy conference with its budget like that. Okay. And then how do you get a report? So let's see, here's a budget by class. I'm gonna go ahead and click a budget overview. And it's going to give me a report that's going to show me the budget that I entered. This is something that you could get a board to vote on. Okay. And I'm going to go to view and click expand all, and then we'll see all the numbers. Or we can just switch to the classic view. Then the numbers will already be there. Okay. Um, and this is what the board could vote on. You see, by using classes, then you don't have... Your your expense accounts go down. You don't have as many. We only have one account for supplies because we use a different field for whether it's supplies for the guidance center or synergy conference or aware campaign or admin. So you end up with less um, accounts because you're using classes to track things. Okay. So that is going to be the um, – uh, trying to think. Yeah, okay. So that's the budget overview. And then we're going to go to the gear and we're going to go to budgeting again. And then I'm going to pick the other report. Notice how they don't have a budget performance report like they do in desktop. Sorry about that. Budget versus actual, although it's not my fault. I don't work for it to it. <laughs> uh, but waiting for this report to pull up. And I'm going to go ahead and just switch to the classic view because I just think it's prettier. Now we have the actuals and the budget and the variance for the guidance center. And then the actuals and the budget and the variance for the synergy conference and the actuals budget variance. Okay. Now I can change this because I have a dollar variance and a percent variance. Um, look at how, let's go to the expenses. We spent 52,000. Our budget is 72,000. So this is a minus 20, and then there's a percentage. Some people don't like the fact that this is a minus. They're like, well, we have 20,000 left to spend, so can I just make this be a positive instead of a negative? You can. I'm going to go to Customize, and you see where it says dollar amount over budget? I'll make this remaining instead, and I'll get rid of the percent altogether. So now, 
either, is it? Yeah. Now it's 20,000 left to spend. So you might like that better. Okay. That's up to you. All right. Uh, yeah, no, Michelle, everybody switches to a uh, classic view. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, in desktop, oh, wait, one more thing. If you budget by class, you don't need to do an overall organization wide budget because all you have to do, I'm going to go to customize and instead of in the grid, instead of account versus classes, I'll do account versus total. I'll click run. And this is my report for the board. So you don't have to do in QuickBooks Online and in QuickBooks Desktop. When you do your budgeting and you're picking create a budget, you either do a consolidated budget or you do a budget by class and pick all classes. There's no need to do both. Okay. Does that make sense, Kim? Kim? Does that make sense? Because if you do a budget by class, you also get the budget to actual for total. Okay. And in QuickBooks Online, um, reports, budget versus actual, you pick the one that says account and class. Next. Now, notice what it's going to do. It's going to ignore the classes and add all the class budgets together and just still give this to you by month. I don't need that. I want it account by class like that. Now it gives me columns for each one of my classes. I'll click next. I'll click finish. So then I've got the actuals, the budget, and the variance. For each one, if I click columns and make them total only, I get the budget for the board. And if I click on customize, I can put, let's see, does it let me do? No, I don't think it does. It doesn't let me do percent remaining. So that minus 20 is always going to be a minus 20. I can't change it. I don't think. Yeah, it won't let me. I can get rid of the percent though. So anyway, all right. So I'm trying to think what else is there. Um, I didn't look at questions too much. So why don't we make sure that people have their questions answered? Um, Susan, can we separate operations from program? We use classes for operational departments, which we would use, want as one budget to actual, and then a hundred or so classes for program activities that we would want to separate program to actual. It's possible to set up as separate budgets. You can... Are both of them, are classes used for departments as well as for programs? Susan? Okay, does that mean the programs are underneath departments? Programs are like within departments? Does that mean programs are within departments? Because I think what I want you to do, Susan, in QuickBooks Online anyway, I assume you're in QuickBooks Online, Susan. She stopped answering. We use separate GLs for operations and for programs. No programs are not. With, okay. So you can do two separate budgets. And I know you're using accounts, but I would prefer you not to do that. I would prefer if you go over to the gear and go to settings and click on advanced. There is something called locations in QuickBooks. I would want you to turn this feature on and I'm going to make this be department and I'll save. So then when you go to do a transaction, and this will certainly clean up your books. You will be able to enter a class over here and a department up here. And you'll be able to run a budget to actual. If you go to the gear where you're entering budgets and click on create a budget, subdivide, you'll see now you can do it for departments. Okay. So that's what I would consider doing. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. I had a request for budget to actual with the month's expenses, the year to date expenses versus the, I would, would I have to do that by exporting to Excel and cut, cutting and pasting? Yes, you would. Can we automatically increase last year's actuals by a percent for inflation and QBO? No. Um, I mean, you could copy a budget and do calculations within QuickBooks, but, um, no. Uh, okay. So um, let me show you a couple of things before you guys go, because I think there's still 173 people here. Let me just show you a couple of things, and I'll, maybe I'll answer some more questions after. If you go to, let me go to QuickBooks Made Easy. We have a webinar that's coming up in two weeks. And it's with an organization called Nonprofit Financial Commons. It's coming up on September the 18th. It's on budgeting. We will do budgeting by grant for them. them. And we also have a second day where we're doing just tracking restricted grants. It's two hours a day, so we'll be able to spend a lot more time on this. Um, and I think it's $199 is the early bird pricing. So if you like the way that I teach, you can certainly sign up for that. Also, if you want uh, the training, if you want our on-demand training, on-demand webinars, and on-demand courses, I'm going to go to the on-demand courses, because what this is, this is basically the encyclopedia for how to use QuickBooks if you're a nonprofit. It's called The Bundle. It's me teaching with the videos. It's a bunch of little five minute videos. You can, there's a table of contents. You can scroll just to the parts that you need. I'm going to click view course. And it teaches you everything you could ever imagine that you'd want to know about QuickBooks, tracking special events, tracking volunteers, customizing forms, tracking funds, capital campaigns, bank recs, entering donations and grants using QuickBooks as a donor database. It's tons. Okay. And we're giving that to you. It's normally $3.99, but we're giving you a discount on that. Um, it's only going to be two ninety eight. So we're giving you what is that? Um, uh, it's a hundred dollars off. And the code is Tech Soup two nine eight. And this code it's only good until the end of Saturday night. Okay. And some people just want tech support. They want to be able to call us, ask us questions twenty four hours a day. If you call on the weekends, I'm the one who will answer. We can even remote into your data file. You can create appointments with us, and we can help you with your QuickBooks. It's typically $500 for a year. We're giving it to you for $300. We're giving you $200 off. Okay. Um, the code for this is TSTech299. TSTech299. And to sign up for uh, the bundle, you click here. You click online or desktop and click add to cart, and then you put that code in. This TS298. Or if you just want tech support, we click tech support, click a year, online or desktop, $4.99 normally, and then at checkout, you put in this code TS Tech299. All right. So um, I think that's it. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Do you update the bundles as QBO rolls out new features? If it's something major, we do, Dave. We do. And you can always get uh, updated to the latest version. Uh, let's see. Uh, can we auto... No, I, 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 reached from, da, 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 da. I recently switched from desktop to QB online. The online version now shows a statement of activity instead of a P&L. Is that correct? Yes. Um, in QuickBooks Online, if you when you set up QuickBooks Online, some people, when they go to reports... This is kind of an interesting fact. Um if you go to your standard reports, this is going to say P&L. Some of you will say statement of activity. If when you set up your organization to begin with, I'm going to go to the settings. In the company name area, actually, I was think it was tax form. Yeah. Industry. If I click here, if I put that I was a nonprofit, like that and click save then it's going to assume that i'm a nonprofit organization and nonprofits are supposed to be called statement of activities not pnl so this still says pnl but let me refresh the screen and it's going to change over 
to statement of activity. There it is, statement of activity. So you can change it back and forth at will. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Paige, you want to come online, see if anybody else has a question? Or if you have a question, something that I didn't answer, you think I should? Let's see. No, you definitely got it. This was just enough time today. Perfect. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see. I'm just want to see if there's anybody else. Go ahead and put your question again if you haven't gotten it answered. Um, is it a is it a good value to get this special offer? Um, to get the tech support, it is yes. If you already have the training, you did wonderful. I need to watch it. Okay. So one word for how you're feeling now. It looks like everybody's gotten their questions answered. We've still got, let me see how many people we have here. Um, yeah, we've still got 140 people here. Let's see. All right, cool. So people feel good. Kiyoki's like, woo. Oh, I know you, Kiyoki. Um, how... Do you upgrade to have access to a budget? Okay, so if you don't have what if you don't have QuickBooks Advanced, um, you probably or did you? Well, you probably didn't get QuickBooks from TechSoup, so you probably need to get QuickBooks from TechSoup. How many people don't have QuickBooks from TechSoup? You're paying a monthly fee. Who's paying a monthly fee? The one from Piedmont. So if you're paying a monthly fee. You need to go to TechSoup. Let me go to TechSoup here. And you need to get QuickBooks from TechSoup. Okay? Because you are wasting a ton of money. So you can get the advanced or the plus version. Go ahead and get the advanced version from TechSoup. It is $170 a year. Versus what you're paying per month, which is eventually going to be two hundred dollars. Okay, yes, you can keep your te your desktop through TechSoup, Denise. Yes. Okay. Um, so I would definitely do that. And when you click on this to buy it, advanced, it's one hundred and seventy dollars. It's like a a second QBO account. You're going to want to transfer either your QuickBooks desktop to it or your old QuickBooks Online account that you're paying a monthly, you'll need to transfer that to it. And that's what this data migration support is right here. So be sure to check this box off, and then Page is the one that'll migrate your data from your old data file that you're paying $200 a month for to the new data file that you're paying $170 a year for. Donna wants to know why would I use Advanced over um, Plus? Well, it has some additional features. The best one of all is it backs up. So in QuickBooks Advanced, it will back up your data file. you got to set it up, but it'll automatically back up the data file every five minutes or whenever you make a change. And so you'll have access to the way your data file looked five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, a year ago. And so if you screw your QuickBooks data file up and you don't have um, QuickBooks Advanced and don't have the backup feature turned on, say you downloaded and entered a bunch of transactions that you already downloaded and entered, so now you've duplicated and you don't want to have to de enter, remove each one of them and it's a big mess and you're like, can I just please go back to the way it was before I did this stupid mistake? QuickBooks Advanced, you can. You can go in and restore a backup to remove all the problems. If you have QuickBooks Plus, you can't. Okay. Um, if you want to know how to budget for restricted grants, um, we are going to teach you how to do that in the webinar that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Okay. It's with nonprofit financial commons, budgeting, tracking, restricted grants. All right. All right, I think we're done. We got 127 people here. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to you, uh, Aretha, so that you can get us uh, out. I'm going to leave these codes up. Um, but thank you so, so, so much. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Just a friendly reminder, I'm going to send the recording. If technology acts right, you'll have it in a few hours. If not, you'll have it in the morning. Thanks, Greg, Paige, and Bill in the background. Thank you all for being here. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.